Hello and welcome. My name is Alan, and today we will be talking about our next next Chief Justice for the next section of the Supreme Court we want to go over. Roger B. Taney. Now he is not. Um, perhaps as high listed um, by some as, say, Marshall is. Because Marshall was presided over so many important cases. But Roger Taney still does hold a important place in our list of Supreme Court Justices. He did take over for uh, John Marshall Let me pull them back up here. Okay. And Roger B. Taney himself was a Supreme Court Justice for 28 years and 198 days. And he was made Supreme Court Justice by Andrew Jackson. He was Supreme Court Justice from March the 28th of 1836 to October the 12th, 1864. Now, Roger B. Taney was from Maryland. Let's look a bit at his history here. Uh, he was the first Roman Catholic to serve on the Supreme Court. You know, there was a bit of a mistrust in American history of Catholics, and Taney was the first Supreme Court member that was Catholic just as we didn't have a Catholic president until John F. Kennedy. But anyway. He was born March the 17th, 1777, in Calvert County, Maryland. And he was born to Michael and Monica Brooke Taney, who were both of uh, English ancestry, and Michael Taney had been educated in France and was a prosperous tobacco grower in Calvert County, Maryland. And this is from... Britannica is uh, what I've been listing here. Let's take a look at Oyez. Um, let's see. Taney attended Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania at the age of 15, where he was at actually elected class valedictorian, so he was a very intelligent person. After graduation, he moved to Annapolis, studying law under Judge Jeremiah Chase, and would be admitted to the bar in 1799. Let's see... Uh, just a few years later, he married Anne Phoebe Carlton Key, who is the sister 
of Francis Scott Key. And if you don't know who Francis Scott Key is, he wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see? He wrote that song. So, yeah. Roger Taney was married to his sister. And that was in 1806 he married her, so. Let's see. Taney was pretty active in politics and was a member of the Federalist Party, which, if you remember, is the party that John Adams was a member of. John Adams, the second president of the United States. Um, but with Thomas Jefferson, there was a wave of anti-federalist sentiment in the country. And Taney, being a federalist, lost his seat in the Maryland House of Delegates. He would move to the town of Frederick, Maryland, where he would practice law for more than two decades. Uh, let's see. Taney would be elected to the Maryland Senate, but after serving a five-year term, he settled in Baltimore, Maryland in 1823 and was elected Attorney General of Maryland in 1827. Um, he actually, around this time, did abandon the Federalist Party. and became a big supporter of Andrew Jackson and the Democratic Party. Now, Andrew Jackson would appoint Taney as U.S. Attorney General in 1831, and for a brief time, Taney acted as a Secretary of War in addition to his duties as Attorney General. Now, because of Jackson's dislike of the National Bank, he fired his Secretary of the Treasury and appointed Taney. Uh, but Taney, despite serving for nine months, would become the first ever cabinet candidate to ever be rejected by the U.S. Senate. And again, this is all from Oyez.org. Let's see. Finally, Jackson nominated Taney to replace Gabriel Duvall on the Supreme Court as an associate justice in 1850. 1835, but the Senate didn't like his views and rejected him again. But 10 months later, Jackson would nominate Taney to succeed John Marshall as Chief Justice. And Marshall was confirmed on March the 15th, 1836. Um, there's a few traditions that Taney introduces, such as um, wearing ordinary pants under his judicial robes. 
and he started the practice of assigning opinions to associate justices. Because remember, before the martial court, they were opinions from each justice that were given. Under the martial court, opinions would be unified. And so those who all agreed on one thing would have one member of the court give that opinion. And if there were dissenting members, those dissenting members would team together and have one person give their dissenting opinion. Which uh, is, is pretty common. But under the martial court, it was the chief justice who often gave the opinion. Uh, Taney would change that by, you know, uh, nominating uh, the actual opinion to be given to associate justices. Let's see. He was a big advocate of Jacksonian theory that the state and national government should share power. But he did believe that the Supreme Court had the duty to decide which powers were shared and which powers were specifically assigned. He was a strong believer in states' rights. Uh, let's see. And he's got a number of well-known cases, not as many as Marshall, but a decent number. Let's see. Do, do, do. Okay, the two cases that he really seems um, to do is one, the Charles River Bridge versus Warren Bridge, which according to Britannica.com, declared that rights not specifically conferred could not be inferred from the language of a document. And thus, in this decision, Taney rejected the claim of a bridge company that the subsequent grant by the state legislature of a charter to another bridge company impaired the legislature's charter to the first company. In other words, you gave charters to both companies. Just because you gave a charter to the second company, it did not invalidate that first charter. Basically say, you know, he's, he, in which he was saying that rights had to be specifically listed in the language of a document. You cannot just go, this is this, and this is this, therefore, this must be this. No, it has to be listed. And of course, the other one he's well known for is the Dred Scott versus Sanford case, which is the really big case of Taney's tenure. Remember we discussed that three were really big under Marshall. This is Taney's case he'll be remembered for. Taney himself um, 
did not accept slavery, but, you know, he, he considered slavery an evil. This is from Britannica.com. He considered slavery an evil and had freed the slaves he had inherited before he came to the Supreme Court. It was his belief, however, that slavery was a problem to be resolved gradually and chiefly by the states in which it existed. So, yeah. Even though he thought slavery was wrong, he felt it wasn't within his rights to tell them, no, you cannot have this or that, you cannot have slavery. They had, he felt they had to end it on their own. But unfortunately, I don't think we would have seen that at the time. Uh... But yeah, Taney would die in October of 1864 during the Civil War in Washington, D.C. So yeah, he was an interesting Chief Justice, to say the least. But uh, we will be discussing members of his Supreme Court in uh, about two episodes because it's there's even more members to mention than there was in Marshalls. Uh, and then we will have an episode for the cases, which... That shouldn't be too long. Like I said, it, it's... Marshalls was about yay long. Taney was about like this. So, it shouldn't be too bad. But, that will be it for now. As always, educate thyself. Think, read, study, learn. Someone tries to tell you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I'll see you all in the next episode. Until then, later.